personally, and, and I a lot, know a lot of other people feel this way, Exhibit A, like I, I showed this comment or this this uh, comment already, and then uh, talking about shooters in the second round or, or free agent. Fee, you're getting all the features here. Um, and it, other people can comment, I promise. Uh, but for me and, and a lot of people that I've seen uh, or, or that I've talked with, they like Kispert and they like the fit, but they don't like taking him at 10. Do you think the Pelicans can trade down to maybe the late teens, maybe the early 20s and get Kispert? I, I've seen him fall in a few mocks recently as well. So it's funny. I actually did a uh, New Orleans radio show about two hours ago. And when I jumped on, they said, please tell me in your mock, you don't have Kispert at 10. <laughs> so I am getting the feeling that that is a, a, a general shared feeling here across the fan base. Um, I think you could trade 10 and still get Kispert at, you know, 13 to 15, uh, 13 to 17, maybe, I think at the very, very lowest. Uh, if you pass on him at 10, there's a good chance you're not getting him. Um, and I, I think he and Duarte, I don't think he or Duarte will be on the board very long. Again, look at the value of shooters on the free agent market or on the trade market. They all command a ton of money. They get paid. So if you have a chance to get one on a rookie scale that you control, you take it. And that's why I don't think they'll be there. Uh, again, if New Orleans looked, looks themselves in the mirror and says, we're trying to win in the next two years, we're going for it now. That is where Kispert, as much as people don't want him, it does make sense. Um, but similar to Kai Jones, Kispert is a guy that at 10, if they don't want him, they can dangle that pick out on the open market and say, hey, like, what do we what do we want here? Uh, and there are going to be some teams in, I don't know about the teens, but in the 20s that are going to want to move up. Uh, so that's where I think 10 is a possibility. I did a show last night where I said, I think the highest you can trade up from the 20s is 10. So it wouldn't shock me if they did move it. So now let we're talking about Kispert possibly being available as you move down. Uh, I was going to talk about Kispert a little bit earlier, but let's talk about him now, and then we'll continue that conversation about trading down. I talk, When I talked with Matt about Kispert at 10, I think it was a couple months ago, he said that Kispert's IQ and, and toughness, basketball IQ and toughness, are underrated. I mean, he's got that 6'7 frame, which you like, but he doesn't have that athleticism, that quickness to really be any 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 type of great defender in the NBA, but that IQ and toughness will help on that end. It, do, do you agree that it's underrated? Can he bring some level of at least knowing the game of basketball on the defensive end? He can. I think he's one of the most intelligent players in the class. Very few mistakes all the way around. Um, not necessarily turnover prone, like can be streaky just like any college basketball player can. But again, his shot selection, generally really, really good. The passing windows he chooses to attack, generally the right ones. On defense, even though he's not the most athletic, he is making good rotations. He stunts and digs when he can. He's doing the right things. Um, never, like, I will say never, rarely falls asleep off the ball. Uh, again, like, you're getting kind of an error-free game, if you will. Similar to similar to Wagner in a way, like, just way better shooter, not the defender Wagner has been in a way. Like, neither of them are just – you generally don't have to worry about their decision making. It's pretty clean all the way around. I, and that's encouraging to hear, especially if the Pelicans do decide to take him at 10. Um, I've mentioned that I, I still don't necessarily like taking him at 10 because you can get the, or well, you can hopefully get some of the more higher ceiling guys like the Moody's, like the Kumingas um, there. And then in terms of athletic ability, you can get Franz Wagner there uh, to be a defender there as well. He's also quite a bit younger, um, which is another reason why I'm not a huge fan of taking Davion Mitchell at 10 should he fall um, yeah. there. Now, in, in look, yeah, just real quick, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, again, to talk about the value of shooting. Okay, so Kispert, I believe Kispert's 22 years old. I don't think he's 23 yet. Uh, let me see. Yeah, he's 22. So let's say he hits his prime 25 to, you know, 28, whatever, 29. At that point, he's a second contract guy. Maybe you can get him on the tail end of his rookie deal if you if you give him that fifth year. Right now, the rookie scale for this upcoming draft at the tenth slot uh, looks like the tenth pick is going to get three point six, three point eight, four point oh, 
5.1 and then a 6.9 qualifying offer. If you want a shooter of his caliber in his third year, if the Pelicans like, hey, in 2024, we're going for it, you're paying 20 plus million for that shooter. Or you can pay him six. And that is where Kispert makes sense playing playing the game of how much do we believe that he is a 40% NBA three point shooter? Mm. Which is why he and Duarte are creeping, creeping up. Not the best athletes, not the best defenders, but hey, I'd rather pay him six, seven million the next three years than I would uh, have to go find somebody for 24. You're making a strong argument. You're making it difficult, Derek. <laughs>